seeking to capture uh, national government in order to bring about Islamic change, we have to work with communities and create change at the community level. <clears throat> so we come to part three of this talk, uh, which is state level interventions, which is exactly contrary to what I have said, uh, that uh, we don't need to worry about the nation state. Uh, but as any part of any trans transitional strategy, because nation states play an uh, important role today, we have to deal with them. We cannot ignore them and we cannot bypass them. But we have to recognize what these things are. These are creations of European politics and they are responsible for enormous amounts of bloodshed and violence. And over the Islamic world, Nation states were explicitly created as a part of the divide and rule strategy. And there is some ve very important book by Wael Hallaq, which should be read by everyone, The Impossible State. He says basically the fundamental, the foundational basis of the nation state is contrary to the, the concepts are contrary to Islam and cannot be reconciled. So the Islamist strategy that we want to capture state power to implement Islam is impossible to succeed because um, a state itself is in conflict with Islamic ideas. Uh, so, nonetheless, as, as I said, we still have to deal with the state. So, uh, with the understanding that state is not a permanent solution, this is part of a transitional strategy. We have to deal with the state because they are so powerful, but hopefully we will evolve beyond that uh, limitation. And states today are dividing the Muslim Ummah, and so they are very causing great harm to us. <coughs> so, uh, with this warning, we go into uh, study how the wh what happens at the state level. So, again, uh, we deal with economic myths, and one of the most popular is that export promotion is the path to development and growth. Also, that the government must raise money by taxes and borrowing to finance expenditures. Banks do not create money. Inflation is due to money creation. All of these are totally false ideas. <clears throat> Four, the truth is that paths to economic growth and development requires development of local productive capacities. And to and if we want to build an industry in Pakistan today, we have to protect it from foreign competition because it will naturally be weak and imperfect. And free trade, which is recommended by economists, benefits the strong economies and destroys the weak. <clears throat> so today, Pakistan is caught in a debt trap. Uh, we have exports of uh, 60, uh, 30 billion and imports only of uh, 60 billion so we need to borrow and when we need to borrow then we are becomes enslaved by the lenders <clears throat> lenders are happy to lend even if they know this will never get repaid because they get control of our policies and using this control they can get enormous advantages much more than uh, the money that they lend us and the money they lend is just paper so it costs them nothing to lend any amount of money <clears throat> so, uh, Jason Hickel has calculated that uh, the data was available for 2012 that about $2 trillion was sent by poor borrowing countries to rich lending countries, and a large portion of this is in terms of interest rate. So, this interest based uh, system, financial system, is a tool for trapping the poor. <clears throat> so, why are we in this debt trap? Well, basically, it's due to economic theory. Uh, Pakistan was fine. Uh, the, the crisis, the crunch in BOP occurs in 2003. Up until then, we had high levels of production. But basically, in 1995, Pakistan joined the World Trade Organization and started lowering the tariffs until they reached this critical point of 15%, and now they are around 8%. And when our tariffs are low, then the imports come in uh, heavily uh, because imports are cheap. And so there was a point at which we were importing uh, oil seeds from Brazil. Even though Pakistan is an agricultural country, why should we be importing oil seeds from Brazil? That's because um, 
our both our duties and our foreign exchange policy made the dollar cheap and the tariffs low and so basically this destroyed local industry <clears throat> and so it's useful to understand the history of free trade theory it was invented by england not by anybody else after england acquired a 50 years lead over europe via the industrial revolution when uh, european countries implemented free trade this created a recession in europe and uh, growth in uk a uh, german economist list invented the infant industry argument and he protected the german industry via trade barriers and today the wto which enforces free trade on the weaker nations has brought great benefits to the rich countries and brought, brought caused great losses to the poor countries here is a picture of the benefits this is the exports of goods and service if you look at the green graph that's the what has uh, the high income countries have started exporting and the gains to the uh, poor countries are very low the the uh, gains to pakistan are uh, not even worth mentioning so <clears throat> basically the system is asymmetric favors the uh, free trade favors the rich and is so what can we do well Pakistan is really caught in a big crunch now and so there is a short run solution which has to be political medium term requires self sufficiency in energy and agri products and this can be achieved in 3 to 5 years and in the long run we need to develop local industries self reliance strategy is necessary and there is a, there is a drastic version in which we can go full islamic and say that we renounce interest payments on foreign debt but this will have massive political implications which can be managed uh, there is a report of the council of islamic ideology on elimination of interest in 1980 which mentions this idea and provides a detailed step by step transition plan uh, it needs to be updated but the outlines are there now in a short term transition to an interest free economy modern islamic banks are the only available option but this is not a satisfactory long term solution <clears throat> so how do we resolve the short term burning problems facing the pakistan economy well the main problem is actually political we have power struggles between the bureaucracy politicians army and foreigners with their own agendas and huge amounts of money to influence outcomes and so the solutions require engineering a united front on defending pa pakistan and um, um and at the same time protecting local industries from collapse which is happening daily in the medium term we need to put all our efforts into creating energy and agricultural self sufficiency this will prevent uh, us from needing so many imports and therefore allow us the uh, once we don't need to borrow money then we can craft our own economic policies it's worth noting that we had industries in silk mobile small electronics large electronics telecommunications aviation industry and all of these industries have collapsed due to competition free trade and um, other factors and this has caused massive damage to producer confidence we need to understand that all of these magic tricks that we are trying to follow that uh, lower corruption do this do that there are 10 forms of the washington consensus formula lower uh, lower tariffs uh, encourage free markets all of these are nonsense they are they are meaningless what we need to do is to develop local productive capacity uh, protect them from foreign competition and uh, stimulate them to grow into world uh, competitive industries and this can be done and there are a number of methods which have been used effectively in other countries in the long run if we want to create a uh, islamic economy we have to eliminate inflation uh, because if you want zero interest you have to have zero inflation now the problem is that economists have no understanding of inflation and to understand this you can just see around the world that they have been unable to control it despite despite their best efforts now we have a minority school of thought <clears throat> uh, 
uh, which is not being taught anywhere except for a few universities, which is called modern monetary theory. Modern monetary theory is intellectual heir to gains. And they have uh, exactly an understanding of inflation. Uh, they have a policy recommendation for zero interest and zero inflation economy. And they have the mechanics of how to create it. 